Hello, how's it? Uh, welcome to the Raging Feminist. Question of the day. Why do you want Botox? Botox. Why do you want it? I'm going to tell you my reservations about Botox. Yes, it deadens the nerves in your forehead here. I guess it could also happen in other nerve sections of your face too, but they largely focus on this section so that you don't get, you don't get these lines, these lines, that one there, and the, the, this lot here. You're not supposed to have these. So these lines and those lines, right? These wrinkles are not fashionable. Women seem to think these are a no-go. Some men too, I think. I'm going to try and get into why I think this is so insidious. So insidious. I was raised as a child to be very accommodating, to be always be polite, to always be accommodating, to be pleasant and to be polite. I was, I was allowed, well I was, it was acceptable for me to look happy and nice and have a smile on my face. Probably the worst that I was sort of, it was acceptable for me to look like was just serious. I noticed going out, not so much my parents, but I noticed going out in society, if you showed too much of a serious face or a concerned face or a face of consternation or, or anger or just stick to downright seriousness, people around me, and I noticed this, it happened with other girls and women too, if you're looking too much like that, people come up to you and go, don't look so serious, smile. You look pretty, you look prettier when you smile. You look prettier when you smile. You look prettier when you don't have these, these wrinkles screwed up on your face. Your facial muscle, your, your facial muscles are not contorting in different directions. I noticed that the same was not said for men and boys. So somehow there's a certain spectrum of facial muscles and facial expressions that are generally acceptable from females. And another lot for males, or I'm, I'm not sure too much about the males, but I just know from my perspective that a female can look happy, she can look sweet, she can look accommodating, she can look um, basically anything along the pos positive, aesthetically pleasing looking facial markers or expressions. But people, men, women included, tend to, men and girls have these facial markers that are acceptable. But there is definitely some that in general society, even to other women, create, seem to create stress from others. For example, anger. If you think of the average thumbnail of a, an angry feminist, an angry lefty with purple or, or a green hair out there, or um, a Karen, a Karen, a Karen. Okay, think of the typical angry facial expressions that you'll see from some of these women and just think of how what emotions they make you feel. They make you feel insecure, like what's going on with the world? Like, why are these women so unhinged? Why are they so angry? It's not even why are they so angry. It's not even that question really. It's more like the question of why do they think they can show such anger? I think that's it. Why do these women feel 
totally okay to show their ugliest selves or ugliest sides within the public. I think a lot of women think this, like men or men seem to be sort of scared by this and they, they don't even want to approach. But women, I think, seem to be asking the question inside their heads, why would she want to show her ugliest side? Why would she want to show her, her worst face? And this comes down to the idea that women are marked, graded, scored on their aesthetic value of what they bring to the aesthetics of an environment. Men do this, but women themselves are also extremely exacting on themselves and on other women too. What this is basically saying is women and girls or females, you can look like you're feeling positive but you, you're not really, it's not okay to look negative. Sorry, I have fluff in my hair. It's not okay to look negative. It's not okay to look angry, aggressive. It's not okay to look concerned about something. It's not okay to look worried. You must always be a happy little thing. You must always be sunshiny and uh, pleasant and sweet and accommodating. And so society places this expectation on women basically by not being allowed to show these different facial expressions. They're saying, society's expectation is saying that you shouldn't be feeling this either. Or you can feel it. You can feel it, but don't you dare show it. Feel it, but don't let us know that stuff's bothering you. Feel it, but you keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. We don't want to know about your problems. We don't want to know about your feelings. However complicated or however righteous you are in those feelings, we don't really want to know. So don't show them to us. I've always felt like, okay, yes, we live in a kind of like a modern society. But if we're still at this juncture where women cannot honestly show the whole spectrum of range of emotions on their face, this is part of the basics of your communication. Your face, your facial expressions. So much is carried forth from the face when you are communicating with other people. So much. And if people are, society is saying, oh, you can only show these, these expressions, but, but not these ones. They're, they're basically curtailing or cutting short whole sections, whole sections of your expression range or what you're allowed to express. This is a form of censorship. <laughs> this is a form of censorship. It's almost like facial expression censorship. Facial expression curtailing, like sort of, you know, you're allowed to do this, but you're not allowed to do that. We don't like that. We don't like to see that from you. You need to look pretty. You need to look pretty. You need to look aesthetically pleasing, not really like a human feeling being, not really like a, a real being with your own thoughts and worries and concerns and things that that, that drive you nuts and you want to do something about. This is still the case and we live in this world and you can see that this is still happening when women themselves are going to Botox clinics to basically cancel their own facial expressions, to cancel their own facial expressions. All these muscles, all these wrinkles are part of a package of forms of expression. It's a package of forms of expression. And it seems like a lot of women don't seem to want, uh, maybe it's men too at a certain high level, but women don't seem to want to allow 
the expressions that come along with the lines here and the lines here. What's that about? Let, let's let's analyze that. So all these muscles and the lines are so they let, let, let's look at them. So if I do this, I look like maybe this is surprised. Surprised, or maybe I'm doubting something. I'm surprised, or I'm doubting something, or I, maybe I look skeptical. These lines could show skepticism, right? Am I not allowed to look like a skeptic sometimes? Am I not allowed to look critical about something? Oh, yes, these lines are maybe lines that appear before someone starts to criticize you about something, right? Or, or critically analyze something. Mm, I wonder why that's the case. Why, why do we want to hide these lines? Why is it okay that men can have their whole range of facial muscles in different directions with lines and wrinkles and everything, but women must look like a, like a doll with the makeup and the two spots of blush and like just, just pretty, pretty wide-eyed with no real range to work with. You can have the pleasant ones, but you can't have the, the deeper more serious ones. Jeepers. <sighs> we haven't come that far if we can't even show our facial expressions. This is what I'm trying to say. We have not come far enough if we have to hide our facial expressions. And these lines here, these lines here, right? These lines, these lines of consternation or I'm going to brainstorm what these possibly are. These are for me, I often notice I'm doing this in the mirror often, and it's probably usually when I've been reading or something, or I'm, I'm focusing my attention on something. I'm focusing my attention on something, and I'm really concentrating. It could be when I'm thinking deeply about something and I'm puzzling through something. Why, why can you not look like you're puzzling through something? Why can you not look? Like you've been thinking through things. Why can you not look like a deep thinker? Why is this a problem? Why is this a problem? I mean, if you look at images of men, there's almost always this, there's almost always this, and nobody gives them aesthetic downgrading. They just go, that's his face. That's just his face. We should be as accepting of our faces too because this is our, our range of expression right here. Our visual expression of what we think and feel and say. Anyway, so this is what I'm saying. Like, if, if you're thinking of going into Botox or going to get it done, Okay, essentially you're deadening the muscles that move this part of your face around. But really think about what is your motivation for doing this? What, what's, what's driving you? Uh, you you want a you clear little face that doesn't really move much, show much criticism or focus or deep thinking or maybe worry? Maybe even worried. Uh, yes, I get these lines when I worry about something. Life is not easy. Life it has freaking been ups and downs and like almost not making it. And, you know, this shows that you've been through that. Why would you want to negate that? Why would you want to negate all that from your range here and what you show people that you've been through? You're a whole person. You're due what you've, you're due the marks of what you've been through. They're like the scars of your life. Something you can actually be proud of, like, yes, I've made it this far, and I'm okay. Here's the thing. If you are dating someone, man or woman, I don't even care, man or woman, you are dating them, and they're saying, um, I'm not sure how I feel about these lines on your head. Maybe you could get some Botox. I think you seriously need to reassess both sides' value systems their value system and yours. And why would they want to erase that from your head? That's part of you. That's part of you. I do know that, um, especially in Asian culture, there's this idea that you want to look young. 
You want to look young and fresh. Basically, you want to look like you haven't been through the trials of life yet. You haven't been through the trials of life. Why? You've, you're, you're a noob. You're a noob. You're, you're a greenhorn. You just rocked up here like, like, like a baby and you know nothing and everything's just been great and fine and wonderful. That's... It's the same as social media where everybody sees the very positive sides or the great parts of everybody else's life, but they never see the dark sides or, and they never see the stressed sides or the, the sides of depression of people's lives where they haven't been doing well at all. It's the kind of the same thing. You know, everything's just positive and lovely and nice, but you know what? We're all human. And I think, you know, when I see a woman who's got like the whole range, of, it's just, that's her. That's her. She's had a life. You're not like a clone with 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 clear shiny skin coming right out of vat of a vet and you've been sitting in collagen gel your whole life where life's life has completely not touched you at all. I mean living in bubble wrap. That's not even good for the person you're you're supposed to be getting together with. Here's another thing about this. There's another thing about this. If Every time you do something to, to negate parts of yourself, every time you do something to negate parts of yourself, whether it's your facial express, like your expressive ability, or I don't know, maybe your the different things, you're sending a message to everyone around you that this is okay with you to be doing this. You're sending messages, uh, a message to your partner and your family that you're okay with negating whole parts of yourself. You're sending me a message, a very clear message to your children, to your children, that it's not okay to look a certain way. Women are sending messages to their girl children that it's not okay to look angry or sad or concerned about something or angry. Basically, it's not a, again, you're passing on that message to your kids that it's only okay to look pleasant and friendly. If you have anything else to say, keep quiet, do not show it on your face, stow it inside and give yourself cancer later on because you couldn't, you couldn't express your emotions. We are sending messages to our children that their facial, their facial expressions that they're having, this facial expression, this facial expression is not allowed, especially to the girls. We're sending messages time and time again to all the girls saying, this is not okay. You need to hide it or get some Botox yourself. Well, think about it. Maybe we're not actually saying it, but a girl child seeing her mom or all the women around her getting that, she's just going to think, oh, that's the way it is supposed to be. I'll, and then they probably wind up doing the same thing after they're 18 or 19 too. And this is just part of normal society. Uh, we've just got to hide all of this stuff. All our, all our slightly negative things, that, or things that we're worried or concerned about. And you just, just put it in the back. It, it's not there, really. Yeah. What do you think this is doing to you psychologically? And down the road, what will it do to them psychologically? There's a few things that I've stopped doing. I mean... I mean, I don't wear that much makeup anymore, but and I've, my, I've got like so much gray and white hair that I've just let grow up. I actually don't think it looks that bad. It, it looks, it actually looks um, more awkward in the beginning. Like I used to dye my hair and then you could see the white growing out. And that, that was the part that looked really weird and awkward. But when it all grows out, I think it looks okay, actually. And I've noticed, like I work at a school and I've noticed some of the other women have kind of commented to me sometimes like you know what your gray or, your, or what your white hair is actually not bad looking and I'm like thank you honey feel free to do the same thing yourself you don't have to always be burning and bleaching your hair into a different color I'm not saying you shouldn't do that because you feel like expressing yourself in one way or that sure go ahead but what I'm talking about is when you get to a stage where your own your own color coming or your own lack of color coming out of your scalp is sending or it you you feel like you can't even show your own coming through it at any point regrowth whatever oh, but 
Some people can't even see the smallest part of it. The smallest part of themselves growing up, they, they've got to go to the hairdresser. They've got to cover that up. I've got to get my hair done. I've got to get it covered. Your whole life? Your whole life growing your hair? And every time part of you grows out, you've got to burn it down to a different color or you've got to cover it up with something else. Self-acceptance is a beautiful thing, man. It actually won't drive people away from you. What it will do is send a huge message of hope to other women out there, other people, and the children. It will send a message of such hope to the younger generation that they see. Wow, there's this grown lady. She's working. She's a positive influence in our in our uh, community. She's uh, She looks like she's okay. She's healthy. She's a viable member. And she's totally growing her gray hair out. Cool. I noticed my, my students, I don't think they knew that I could, I was picking up that, that they were talking about me because they were talking about me in Chinese. And I, I was sitting in front of them and I was, was just, I had my head down and I was busy doing something. And I could see there were two girls just further off from me, like, just, they were looking at each other and, and, and they kept like looking at my hair and then they were discussing with each other. And basically what the thing was, they discussed it. Oh yeah, it's, it's unusual. Like, you know, not many people do that. Da, da, da. And then basically they came to the conclusion. The one girl said, you know, it doesn't look bad. And the other one was like, yeah, right. It doesn't look bad. And they were surprised by this. They were surprised that it didn't look bad. It doesn't have to look bad. It's just gray or white. It's just a different color. Yes, okay, I may be getting old. I'm 43. I don't care. Yes, I'm going one day I'm gonna be old and decrepit. But at this at the moment I have a sort of ash brown hair and I have a bit of grey and white and I don't feel like it's a terribly bad thing. I don't have a problem. Yes, it shows that I'm getting old. I'm not a spring chicken. I'm not 16 years old. I don't want to be. I think it's alright. No problems. I'm kind of actually waiting for fatter streaks, actually. You know, like, uh, who's that uh, woman in the Adams family, Morticia, with, with, a, with a fat streaks? I, I, think, I don't think streaks are bad. You know, they, it's quite a cool. I've noticed if I put my hair back like this, sort of half, half down, half up, at the back there's two streaks that come from behind my ears. And that's quite cool. I like that. Yes, it could be aging. Yes, it looks, uh, I'm definitely not looking young anymore, but I don't care. I think I deserve my age. I've lived through stuff. I have experience. I know things. I think I'm pretty wise about some stuff, not about everything. But I feel like I deserve what I've got to and where I am and how I look. Okay, I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not an L model. I, I'm not, you know, but like, so what? And my thing is, if someone is going to judge me on that, if someone is going to like crit me on that, fine, you know, you, you don't have to enter my life. That's the person that I don't want in my life. The one who's judging me on the way I look and everything, who's picking me apart, fine, do it. You are basically putting yourself in the category of people, in the category of people that I don't want and I don't need in my life. Thank you very much. Someone even, even told me one day, Jen, you, 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 your hair is white. You're growing your hair out white. I'm like, yes. They say, well, why? I'm like, it's the best way to scare away assholes. Oh, dickheads. <laughs> and they were like, oh, yeah. Well, it's kind of true, isn't it? I mean, you know, there's a lot of very shallow people out there. And this kind of thing sort of knocks off a whole bunch of shallow people all at once. Anyway. Um, now, now what I'm saying is like, maybe you want to dye your hair blue because you know, you want to match your, your nail polish and that kind of thing. Yeah. I totally, I mean, I was different colors for, for years and years and years. But what I'm talking about is when you, you've tried all your experimentation and when you get to a lull of like, just not coloring your hair in any particular way, but when you do see your original color coming through. Don't be terrified. If it's got a bit of white in it, so what? You're human. You've aged a bit. There's nothing wrong with that. You are fine. 
Accept yourself. You've done a lot. You've been through so much. You've lived through things. You're just a human being. It's funny how, like, if you're born a man or a male, you're seen as a person. You're seen as a person first, and then you're seen as male. But if you're born as female, you're seen as female first, and then as a human. You're seen as female first, and then as a human. I'll give you an example. Think of it like this. Okay, uh, blank your mind, blank your mind. Just stop thinking things. I'm going to say one sentence, okay? A person walks into a room, okay? A person walks into a room. What gender is the person? Are they male or female? You're right. Okay. In your mind, well, uh, for me, even for me, when I did this the first time, I was like, a person walks into a room, and I just pictured a male. A person walks into a room. A human walks into a room. In my mind, it's first off, it's a male. Then I had to think to myself, ah, oh, but that can also be female too. That can be female too. So she's also a person. I need, I need to correct myself on this. So just, just know that. Be aware of it. And yes, back to Botox. You, you don't need it. And if anyone's going to be judging you for it, basically what they're saying is they are not okay with whole sections of your life that you've been through. They are not okay that you've lived through it and got through it and survived and been okay and worked through it onto the other side. They are not okay with, with you feeling your feelings. They're not okay with that. Why on earth would you want someone in your life who totally wants you to negate negate or cancel whole areas of your personality and character and your experience. Why would you want to be with a person like that? It's so... What's the word? It's really selfish. Because, I, I don't know, what I've noticed is there's a lot of expectation for one side to be perfect in a certain realm like this. But there's not much expectation on the other side. Like a man, a man can look angry and concerned and consternated and serious. And he's never judged for looking that way like that. He's, he's, his emotions, his expression about it, the way he talks about it, it's all taken on board as fine. I must admit though, I, I, do, I am aware that men on the other spectrum are are also judged and criticized for having certain emotional looks on their face. I think probably in the last generation, they were probably judged as being sissy boys or sissy or gay or, or whatever. Like, But in, in like the negative way, like the past negative way when it was not accepted, a man couldn't, a man couldn't and, and sometimes still cannot in many countries, still cannot show his full range of facial emotions. There's that. There definitely is. I understand that. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. Know that you're okay in your own skin. And if someone else is demanding for you to change it, maybe you need to look around or learn to be happy on your own until things change, the terrain changes. Strengthen yourself up. Build yourself up. You don't need to change that much. You're fine. Your face is fine. There's nothing wrong with you. It's a face. We all have them. You live in it. You deserve it. You've been through struggles. Show what you are. And if it scares people away, good. If it scares people away, good. Anyway, stay strong, stay healthy, and all the best to you. If you have anything you'd like to add or suggest, please put down here in the comment section. Have a lovely day. See ya.